Um, welcome to everybody who is participating today. Um, I'd like to introduce Bradley Taylor. I'll let you take it away, let, you, let uh, folks know who you are. You're on the council and an advisor, um, and I'll let you start chatting about the topic. Absolutely. Thank you, Eileen. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to get the PowerPoint going here in just a second, but as Eileen said, I'm Bradley Taylor, and it's a, a wonderful opportunity to be able to present this to you. I'll tell you a little bit more about myself in just a minute. Um, let's see if I can get the uh, PowerPoint going here for you. All right, and present. Yep, looks good. Awesome. Fantastic. So again, welcome. Today, obviously something uh, drew you to uh, discovering your unique personality, um, uh, what I'm calling true colors. And so today we're really going to work with you. Um, and as a team, we're going to uh, try to discover what each one of us has in our personality. Um, and we're going to relate that to a color. Have you ever been curious maybe about your unique personality type or perhaps how others see you um, in maybe a group project or um, in your residence hall in ALD or maybe other organizations you're a part of? Um, is there someone uh, in your friend group or in your class that maybe you would like to learn a little bit more about like how to work better with them, how to communicate better with them? And if any of these are true, then this is the perfect presentation for you. Um, it's gonna be a wonderful experience, so let's get started with True Colors. All right. So as mentioned before, um, I'm Bradley Taylor. I am a uh, High Point University Senior Success Coach, so we work primarily with first-year students. Um, and it has been um, a thrill to be a part of ALD, both as a chapter advisor for the past couple of years um, but also uh, recently starting my um, experience as a national council member. Um, I'm really passionate about leadership. I'm passionate about understanding life's vision, kind of what your life vision is, and how to create better teams. And so today, um, uh, I'm going to be drawing from my experience both as a um, youth and a volunteer leader in the Boy Scouts of America, where I've kind of gained a lot of leadership skills, but also from my experience as a campus leader when I was an undergrad student, um, just like you. So um, there's lots of times we can kind of pull together our experiences when we worked with other people, um, and you'll notice the direct connections uh, with what we're going to talk about today. So uh, let's get started. Um, just wanted to go over a couple of quick objectives um, and, and hopefully you'll find that these objectives um, were uh, something that interested you when you signed up for this webinar. Um, so this session we're going to look at um, a self-assessment tool. Um, hopefully you've been able to do that already uh, to better understand your unique personality type. Um, there's four basic types and we're going to relate those to colors. And so becoming more aware of what each color represents, what that personality embodies. Um, we also want to try to look at how people of different personalities work together, whether that's on a team project for a class, or maybe um, as you're looking toward uh, your career, um, working with coworkers in an office environment, or maybe it's within ALD um, as a group of officers with whom you are trying to work to create um, a program or something like that. We also want to work on techniques for engaging with those who are similar to you and to those who are different from you. And that's going to be very unique um, and very pivotal um, in understanding, you know, why you get along with certain people and then maybe um, areas that you could improve relationships with others. And lastly, I'm going to try to give you some tools um, that you can apply um, in your daily life um, about how we can know how the colors work and, uh, and interpret them and be able to grow um, our minds and our experiences. And so, as I mentioned before, there was a, a pre-webinar activity. Um, it's a worksheet. Uh, one page, so it's not too long, um, that we sent out, and I'm going to present that uh, link just a little bit later in case you were not able to get that link um, so you can work on that worksheet 
Um, but feel free to complete that if you haven't already um, as I move on to the next couple of slides. Um, it doesn't take long at all, and uh, then we're going to circle back around to it. All right. So I'm sure many of you have heard there's all kinds of personality assessments, um, indicators, learning styles. Oh my gosh, too many to figure out. It's almost like color and alphabet soup, right? So one of them you've probably heard of is called the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator or the MBTI. Um, that's kind of the alphabet soup, right? Uh, it sorts for preferences. It measures your personality based on four spectrums. There are 16 different types, and each uh, type is equal to another. Um, so that's one personality assessment. There's another one called DISC, D-I-S-C, um, and that stands for Dominant, Inspiring, Cautious, and Supportive. And that one is a personal assessment based on individual behaviors. It's very helpful to adapt your behaviors to others. And then lastly, another big um, kind of a personality or learning assessment is understanding what our dominant learning style is. There's three main ones, uh, visual where we like to see things, the auditory where we like to hear things, um, or kinesthetic where we want to engage, kind of getting our hands dirty. And so um, today we're gonna focus on a fourth one called true colors. I think it's always helpful to have a little background information as to all the different types of personality assessments and why True Colors um, is really exciting um, for our presentation today. So the theory of True Colors traces all the way back to Hippocrates, back in 460 BC, I know, ancient, right? Um, and that's where Hippocrates identified the four temperaments of humans. Um, and, and they're not exactly what we call them today, um, but there were four different temperaments. And then Plato, just a little while later, um, actually came up with ideas about character and personality. And many of these great thinkers, um, including others like um, Jung, Fromm, Kersey, Myers-Briggs, to name a few, um, they've all expanded on this and developed their own assessments. Um, so uh, a gentleman by the name of Don Lowry introduced True Colors in 1978, so just a, a few decades ago, um, and it correlates four colors to the four temperaments. Um, so we wanted to try to bring it in a very simple format and bring it together. So let's kind of move on. Why True Colors? Why is it important? What are we going to get from it? So True Colors uh, allows you to take a one personality assessment to better yourself. So it allows you to understand you, right? You are the most important factor in any interaction, um, connection, a relationship, project, or team. So if you understand yourself better, you're gonna be able to work with others in a more collaborative environment. It allows you to understand what your strengths are. Um, it's always helpful to know where our strengths lie, but also where our weaknesses, so that way we can um, find other people that can complement us when we're building a team. The next thing is it allows you to appreciate the strengths of others, because as I mentioned, their strengths and your weaknesses can come together collaboratively and form a great team um, that you're gonna be able to do some amazing things. And then kind of think about this. When you work with other people, um, you're working with other types and personality types. We have more than one personality type. We have a dominant one, but we also involve all of the colors. And so our teams and our groups, like ALD officer boards or group projects, should always include people of many colors. Um, so that way we can work together. All right, so let's kind of uh, go back to that activity I mentioned a little bit earlier. This is a screenshot of that activity. Um, it's called the True Colors Personality Assessment. And um, you'll notice that it's pretty straightforward. Um, there is a box and uh, each box has kind of like four groupings of words. And uh, hopefully if you've been able to do that, um, we'll uh, you know, be able to move forward. If you have not, um, you can always go right here to the tiny URL on your screen, tinyurl.com forward slash true color quiz. And you can download that, you can complete it in just a couple of minutes and then you'll be able to kind of get connected um, to our uh, presentation real time. Um, but hopefully, if you did complete this assessment, 
you were able to go through each box. And in the four categories of words, um, hopefully you were able to use the ranking um, to put a four, three, two, and one. Four being most like you, three somewhat, two less, and one least like you. And then doing that for box one, two, three, four, and five. Once you finish all of that sort of thing, um, you kind of went through and ranked um, the words and um, that, that best resemble you and your personality. Then what we wanna do is be able to go to the bottom box called results. Um, you'll transcribe all of those uh, numbers down there and add them up. And you'll notice under the total line, it says the colors, right? So this is where we're going to have the rubber meeting the road. We're gonna find out what your primary and secondary color is. So um, hopefully you've been able to figure that out. Um, I'm excited to see what everybody uh, comes up with. Um, just a couple of times in this presentation, I'm gonna be using Poll Everywhere. So if you wanna pull out your uh, web browser, you can, uh, the web link is there, or you can pull out these fun little mobile devices and you'll be able to uh, text in your answer. So um, if you don't get these uh, text number or the web link, um, it'll be on top of the screen with the poll as well. Um, so don't worry, we're, we're not gonna leave you behind. All right, so um, as we move forward, um, the next thing that I wanna ask is, which color is your primary or your highest color? Um, and so we've got a little poll everywhere. Um, so it should be active. Um, so if you will, um, let's go ahead and get started. Let's see what everybody came up with. Um, so go ahead and, and text yours in. I'm gonna do the same so I can participate. All right, let's see, here we go. So let's see here. I can't wait to see what everybody says. Hopefully, there we go. We've got one response. We've got a gold in the room. Let's see, do we have, what other colors do we have? Um, I'll keep it open for just a, a minute or, or so there so we can have a few other folks kind of chime in and uh, we'll see what happens. Oh, wow, we've got a green in the room. Let's see, do we have any others? Bradley, can you hear me? Yes. Is, um, I'm trying to, but I don't think I did. Is, um, is it T-A-Y-L-O or zero? Yeah, the, it's, a, it's an O um, and there's no R. <laughs> yes, right, right. Okay. It, it is an O for the alphabet. Yep. Sorry. Oh, we've got two greens or three. Wow. All right, we'll give it just a few more seconds and then we'll move forward and we'll start to dissect what these four colors represent. And then we'll circle back around to another poll in a little bit um, to see if you feel like your color actually matches your personality. Um, that's going to look at the validity of this assessment. All right, so we're going to move forward. Feel free to uh, to keep you know chiming in if you if you want. Um, but we'll we'll come back to this in just a few minutes. All right. So one of the colors is an orange. Uh, now orange is my favorite color, but it's not my color. Um, so uh, let's check out the characteristics of an orange personality. So the oranges. Um, they're the just do it people. Um, they're like, let's get in there, let's just do it, let's get this done. Um, so I'm just gonna highlight for you a couple of the strengths. Um, they're pretty calm in a crisis, but, um, and they're innovative and they embrace risk. So sometimes they're the adventurous people. Um, a lot of times they can multitask, they can do a lot of things at one time. But one of the things that can be their pitfall with all of that is they're impulsive, right? They don't do a lot of planning, so they neglect that prep time. 
Um, sometimes they avoid problems instead of planning. They would rather just have fun than plan. Uh, sometimes they'll sacrifice kind of the follow through so they won't necessarily finish something that they start. Some of the things that stress them out a lot are rules, micromanagement, the details. I mean details upon details upon details, long meetings, and having some sort of a routine. They like to just kind of freeform it. So, um, so you'll notice a little bit of a trend already for the orange folks um, and how that just do it mentality comes into play. In terms of their leadership style, um, they usually are quick to take action, very direct. Um, they bring a lot of energy to the presentation or to the meeting or to the event. Um, they're great people to be there at the startup. Like if you were have, gonna have a startup company, they would be great for putting out those ideas, getting things um, thrown out there for consideration. They usually bring a lot of humor and a lot of fun. They're the people who are laughing all the time. Um, the ideal situation for an orange person is of course less details, having kind of a variety, um, not mundane, they, they don't like that at all. Um, a little bit of a relaxed atmosphere, um, they like, you know, kind of the colorful and lively flair, right? They like things to be fun. Um, they don't want it being dull or dry or routine, um, which leads to why they like freedom. Um, and a lot of times um, you'll notice your orange folks um, are usually more creative. Um, they bring uh, kind of maybe different things to the table. Um, they might uh, bring an idea that you've never really thought about, or they might add a spin to a program that uh, like an ALD chapter is going to host that maybe hasn't ever been done before. So um, for each of the colors, I kind of have um, a little card here on the screen that embodies a little bit of that personality type. So you'll see adventure, you'll see fun, a little bit of risk taking, that sort of thing. Um, and I like this quote, it says, as an orange, I act on a moment's notice. I consider life as a game, the here and the now. I need fun, variety, stimulation, and excitement. I value integrity and unity in relationships. I'm a natural troubleshooter, a performer, and a competitor. So if there's anybody here who's an orange, I wonder if this is relating to you. Here's a couple of words that kind of stand out about an orange personality. When you're talking to a person who is an orange personality, make sure to keep it light, match their speed, appreciate that creative flair, and be direct. Now, if you are an orange, here's a couple of things to keep in mind. Be aware of how you're coming across to other people. Give others time to process, time to think. Sometimes you can go really, really fast. And you need to kind of build in some time for them to think about what you're throwing out there. <clears throat> it's kind of like that phrase of, you know, seeing what sticks, right? Letting them have some time to consider all those options. And pause before you commit. Um, sometimes oranges overcommit or they commit too fast. And they don't realize everything that they've committed themselves to. All right. So I wonder, are you thinking orange is your color? Well, let's look at some famous people who are orange personalities. Um, John F. Kennedy, uh, President John F. Kennedy is an orange. Um, if you like the Harry Potter series, Draco Malfoy is an orange person. Uh, Tigger from Winnie the Pooh, uh, Eddie Murphy, and uh, Lucille Ball, um, if you're familiar um, with uh, those actor and actresses. Um, so these are just a few of the famous orange personalities. Um, and you might notice some connections to you. And then again, if you're not an orange, you may be like, oh, okay. Now I know why I'm not like those folks. Um, so now that we've kind of looked at orange for a few minutes, let's move over to another color. Let's check out the blue personality. Um, so I wonder, do we have any blues in the house? Well, let's check out what some of their characteristics are. So the blue folks are the, how do you feel individuals? They're really concerned about other people. So as you'll notice in their strengths, they're people, uh, persons. They like to connect with others. They like to be around a lot of people. Um, they show that compassion. They care. Um, they, they show that insight. You know, they, they're concerned if something's coming down the road and it might impact you or them or the team. 
They're charismatic, um, so they've got a lot of emotion and feeling. Um, they're usually a good mediator. Um, if there's a little conflict, a blue person wants to make sure everything is resolved and we're kind of back to homeostasis. And they're usually very optimistic. They, they like to see things on the brighter side. Now, along with that, you'll notice some of their pitfalls is they do like to avoid conflict. They'd rather have things in harmony than have constant friction. Sometimes they're a little too trusting. Um, sometimes they don't always think about what the potential consequences could be. They're easily hurt. Like I said, emotions are big for them. Um, sometimes they're too focused on pleasing others that you can't always find the happy medium. So a couple of things that stress them out, well, broken promises, right? You know, that certainly is, is taking out that loyalty. Um, any sort of unresolved conflict, something that keeps going and going and isn't resolved. Um, any sort of rejection or criticism. Now don't confuse criticism for being like constructive feedback. Uh, they're okay with constructive feedback, but something that might seem harmful. You know, saying, well, I knew you weren't gonna do well with that, might not be a great thing. Saying that, well, I know this is a big challenge, um, but uh, it, it will be a challenge for anyone um, to kind of show that, you know, there's some things that you can grow in. Um, they like competition, but that can stress them out a little bit. Um, they're not as adventurous as an orange. Um, so they don't like, you know, uh, kind of constant competition. Uh, so uh, let's kind of dig into maybe their leadership style and their ideal situation. So as a leader, a blue is going to be very inspirational. Um, they're going to be the ones that are trying to bring the team together, trying to set a little bit of a vision, make sure everybody's happy and on board. Um, they show a lot of appreciation for um, the folks on the team and for all the hard work put in. And uh, they're very facilitative. So like if there's an agenda, you know, they're going to make sure that like everything's finished as you go along. They're going to make sure that um, everybody understands everything. Um, so again, they're very people centered. Uh, so if you're planning an ALD program, your blue folks are going to be wondering, um, you know, how is this going to be perceived by those who attend the program? Whereas your orange folks are just going to be throwing out things and they're going to be about all the fun. Like what's going to be fun here? So the ideal situation for a blue is a team focused, very social, a very collaborative environment. Um, they're gonna want a little bit of reflection time because again, remember, it's about the emotion, it's about how they feel. Um, and they of course like harmony. So let's kind of take a look at a visual. Um, you can see some of that harmony, uh, compassion, people focused in, in the graphic here. A blue person would say, I need to feel unique and authentic. I look for meaning and significance in life. I need to contribute to encourage and to care. I value integrity and unity in relationships. And they are natural romantics, poets, and nurturers. So here's just a couple of adjectives that you could kind of read in between the lines, if you will, for a blue. Now, when you're talking to a blue, uh, personality. Make sure to acknowledge them. Make sure, like, hi Sally, hi John, um, glad that you're part of the team. Be very personal with that individual. Hear them out. Make sure you're able to listen to the whole thing and try to limit sarcasm. They might misinterpret that as being critical or, or you know, a little offensive. Now, if you're a blue person in, in the uh, house, let's think about Recognize if you're reading between the lines too much. Sometimes blues can overanalyze kind of the in-between. Make sure to add no to your vocabulary because sometimes blues can overcommit in their efforts to make sure that everybody's happy and everything's in harmony. Speak up, right? You know, they like to be the people making sure everybody's engaged and, and you know, everything's going well. Um, so sometimes, you know, if a, an orange is overpowering them, they need to speak up and make sure to discern when you're rambling. Sometimes in efforts to uh, get everything out there, to make sure everybody's on the same page, sometimes they can kind of go on and on and on. So um, there's a couple of, of tips for you. So I bet you're wondering, who are some famous blue personalities? Well, let's check them out. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Oprah Winfrey, 
uh, Mother Teresa. Again, back to the Harry Potter reference, Ron Weasley would actually be a blue. And then from Winnie the Pooh, good old Piglet. Um, so I wonder, do you feel like you connect with some of these people? Do you connect with the blue personality? So let's, let's see, I wonder, um, are you thinking orange or blue? Well, guess what? We've got two more colors to go. So it may not be orange and it may not be blue for you, but let's see if it's green or gold, all right? Now keep in mind from that assessment, remember there's a primary color and there's also a secondary color. And you'll notice sometimes they're closely connected on a few things. So let's dig in next to our green folks. So I wonder what the green personality looks like. So let's see, the green folks are the why people. They are always wanting to know the why factor. Like, Why are we doing this? Why is it going to matter? Um, so if we look at some of their strengths, they're very intellectual folks. They certainly want to improve things, so they try to find ways to do that. Um, again, they're creative, so they're similar to the oranges in the creative side. However, they are a little bit more systematic and strategic in their efforts. It's not just on a whim that they start doing something. They do usually provide a little bit of vision. So you'll see where a green and a blue can kind of get together a little bit. The green folks is providing vision, and the blue wants to make sure everybody's together. They, uh, with that vision, they can be a little bit futuristic, not quite as innovative as the orange folks, but they can be futuristic um, at looking at things that could be going down uh, the pipeline. So along with those strengths, what are the pitfalls? Sometimes green folks make others feel a little intellectually inadequate. Sometimes they can start bringing the book smart too much and then they're not quite as, as inclusive. Sometimes they can be very complex people. Um, sometimes they try to overthink things a little too much and it can be a big complex problem. So think about, have you been trying to host a program? Maybe one of your peers is a green and they've got this complex program, right? All of these factors, all of these people, all of these steps. Um, sometimes they overthink the instructions. They try to make it too hard. Um, so some of the things that stress a green person out would be just meaningless dialogue. They do like to stay on track. Um, any sort of emotional display. So that's kind of where a blue and a green can have a little bit of friction. The blue folks are very emotional. They like to make sure everybody's feelings are in check, but the green folks, they don't like to talk about emotions. Um, sometimes social functions can be a little bit of a stressor for a green because remember, there's a little bit of chaos in a social function and they like a little bit more order, a little bit more system. Um, and so of course, too many details that can be a big thing um, for a green. Even though they like the details of their plan, having too many, it can be a little overwhelming. So they're very similar to the orange folks in that regard. Um, the orange folks hate details at all costs. So let's think about their leadership style. So wonder, if you were a green leader, you'd be a leader analyzing goals. Maybe a little bit relentless when necessary, um, trying to get the task accomplished. Sometimes they're tough-minded, right? They're, they, they stay strategic um, toward the goal, um, toward the plan. They like a little bit of autonomy, right? So they like to actually engage um, with uh, kind of being in control. Um, they like to kind of lead the ship, if you will. They relate best um, with expertise and not position. So again, the intellectual side, not about like what role do you host, you know, where are you at in the process, um, are you in some sort of authority? But instead, they would rather say, I have the knowledge, not the position. So the ideal situation for a green is a very independent thinking. Um, so if you're thinking about like a group project or maybe your ALD officer team, um, you know, when there's a little bit more of a way to kind of divide and conquer, that's the person for a green. Um, they do like some discussion, but sometimes that can be a little debatable. Um, they do like to be able to have some time to reflect because, again, they like to plan. They like to have a system there. Um, they don't want to just, you know, have that endless dialogue. Um, and, again, they're innovative. So sometimes they can be uh, similar to an orange where bringing something new and exciting. Uh, so 
What famous people do you think are green? Who are the wise? Oh, we have Abraham Lincoln, so President Lincoln. Um, we have uh, Albert Einstein, uh, Whoopi Goldberg, and then from Harry Potter, Harry is a green. Um, can you see that? And then from uh, using our Winnie the Pooh uh, saga, we also have Owl, right? So here are some of your famous greens. So with that in mind, let's dig into what does a visual image look like. Take a look at that. So some science, kind of like the who, what, where, when, why, um, being, remember strategy. So a green may say, I seek knowledge and understanding. I live life by my own standards. I need explanations and answers. I value intelligence, insight, fairness, and justice. I am a natural nonconformist, a visionary, and a problem solver. So while you're uh, thinking about that and taking a look at some of the adjectives, when you're talking with the green personality, here's some things to consider. Give them time to think. Pause. Relax. Give them independence. Don't try to micromanage them. Don't try to, you know, team up to buddy buddy. Let them have some time to think and be independent. Stick to the logic. Don't try to go too abstract. They're innovative, but not abstract. And don't misinterpret their need for information. When they're gathering information, they're thinking. They're trying to plan. Now, if you're a green in the room, here's a few things for you to keep in mind, too. Ease up on the whys. Not everybody has the answer to every question, right? Um, so don't always ask why. Learn to listen without fixing right? Sometimes it's good just to listen and not provide a comment or not provide feedback. Save on the debate. It's, there's a time and a place, but not all the time. And then lastly, inform others when you're processing. So that goes back to that having time to think. When you need a moment, just say, hey, can we just time out for like 60 seconds? Let me think about this for a second. All right. So I wonder, we went over orange, blue, and green. Do you affiliate with one of those? Is that your primary color? Is it your secondary color? Well, we have one more color to look at. You know what that is? It's gold. All right. Some people will say yellow. If you ever do some research, some people will say this is yellow. Um, but most uh, perform, uh, prefer it to be called gold, um, not meant to be uh, anything better um, than the other colors. Um, so uh, here we go. Let's check out the characteristics of a gold personality. All right. So let's take a look. The strengths of a gold person really embody the be prepared mentality. These folks plan and they have a plan and are prepared for everything. This is one of those, like if you ever go on a family vacation, is there somebody who always brings everything for any situation? Yep, they're probably a gold. They're steady in their own schedule. They certainly honor commitments. They will follow it all the way through to the end. They like structure and the details. So they're very detail oriented. They kind of go line by line by line by line by line. They're very thorough and precise, so they want to be accurate. Um, and these people can usually be very dependable because, again, it's all about checking it off the list, right? They're very thorough. Um, they usually uh, kind of look at performance and accomplishment as important, right? So sometimes these are the folks that it's about the award. It's about getting um, for the team maybe some accolade for what they've done, uh, getting a good grade. Now, with some of these strengths, there's also pitfalls. Sometimes that can be a little pessimistic. They're not necessarily looking on the bright side. They're looking at what could go wrong. They're not quite as flexible as needed. So uh, think about a gold and an orange. They're probably going to clash a little bit. They do sometimes assume they know best and they don't always understand the need for change. A lot of times these folks will be like, well, let's not reinvent the wheel. Let's not reinvent the wheel. So the things that stress them out is, of course, things that are not done, things that are incomplete, waste of time. They like to keep their time in check. 
Um, they tend to be a little impatient um, and they uh, certainly get stressed out with inattention to details. So if we think about their leadership style, does it make sense? They respect hierarchy. They kind of like positions, right? They like to know where everybody is. So that way they can make sure that um, everybody's getting their task done. Again, they're detail oriented. They'll probably have a checklist or maybe a role description or something like that. They're very reliable. So if you wanna make sure something gets done, the gold person is a really good person to kind of have as the strategizer, as the person to keep you on track. So they, they focus on those results, right? They're always keeping a checklist and they follow the rules. So, um, you know, sometimes like those oranges, a little bit of the blue, they'll, they'll try to push the envelope, um, but these folks, no pushing of the envelope. So their ideal situation is of course a neat and orderly environment, um, kind of being useful. They like to feel like their time is valued, that they're an integral part of the team, that without them, um, things wouldn't go well. So they like to have a sense of belonging. Uh, certainly they like a schedule and a routine. Um, you'll notice that's that detail oriented with scheduling. Like, you know, they're not just uh, very flexible for on the whim activities. And certainly they like rewards, like they like to have some sort of feedback. So let's take a look at what an image would look like. See a plan, kind of a to-do list, time. Yep, that's a goal. So a gold member would say, I need to follow the rules and respect authority. I have a strong sense of what is right and wrong in life. I need to be useful and to belong. I value home, family, and tradition. I am a natural preserver, a parent, and a helper. Again, here's some adjectives. Um, so when you're talking to a gold person, make sure you communicate in writing. They like to have things written down. Don't interrupt them, let them finish. Be very specific. Um, don't just say, hey, I need you to go do this simple task right over here. They'd rather have the time, place, who, what, where, when, those type of things. Try to stay on target and be consistent. Now, if you're a gold in the house, let's think about it. You gotta have patience, especially when you're talking with other people of other um, colors and personality types. Um, because they can get a little confused. Um, be open-minded and consider options. Don't, don't try to put those horse blinders on there and, um, and you know, just get set in your ways. Be aware of how you are driving yourself because sometimes the team can't catch up or can't stay with you. Maybe you're pushing too fast. And make sure to accept others' way of doing things. Um, because some people like to be more creative or more adventuresome, take more risks, and that's okay. And I know sometimes that can stress you out, but just try to accept other ways of doing things. All right, so I'm sure you're wondering who are the famous golds, right? Well, here you go. There's George Washington, not a surprise, right? Um, there's also Winston Churchill, um, so uh, the two political leaders. We also have uh, Joan Rivers, um, and then Rabbit from Winnie the Pooh, and of course, Hermione Granger from Harry Potter. So I'm sure you can begin to see how the gold personality are in some of these folks from what you know of them. All right, so remember, get out those little handy mobile devices or your web browser. We're gonna go back to a poll everywhere, so get ready. Um, and then let's have one more question. So think about your assessment. Were you an orange, were you a blue, a green, or a gold? Think about your primary color. Remember, there's one that'll be primary and there's probably a close second, which is a secondary color. But think about that primary color. Now, do you feel like your number one color is you, now that you know what the colors represent? I'm interested to see. Awesome, so somebody's already said yes. I'll give you just a couple of minutes. Now sometimes, while we're waiting on some responses, sometimes you might not feel your color. And part of that is because there are usually a primary and secondary and they can almost tie each other. But sometimes your perception 
of your color um, could be different or your personality. You might think, hey, yeah, I'm a very adventurous person. Um, I love social interactions. However, that may be true, but what's your primary? Are you a very organized, strategic thinker? Do you have a plan and a schedule and that orders how, how you do things? So keep that in mind. But um, it's always good to, to think about, do you feel like your number one color describes you best? Um, and keeping in mind that we do have a secondary color. And so sometimes that helps out too. Now, while we're talking about having multiple colors, while one's dominant, we do have others, let's do a little quick recap. And then I'm gonna give you a kind of cool information. So true colors, again, why did we talk about true colors? Why is it important? Um, remember, each color is very reflective of a specific personality type. Um, there's strengths and weaknesses. There's um, things that stress that person out. Um, it, it leads to a certain type of leadership. You will have a primary and a secondary, but keeping in mind, we all have qualities of each color right? It's important to recognize we do have qualities of each color. And that means that we all have strengths and areas of improvement, right? There's some things we do really well and some things not so much. But hopefully, knowing the personality traits, it'll help you become a better communicator and a team player. So let's stop there for a second and let's think about this. If you were working with maybe other ALD officers and you are uh, kind of working on uh, upcoming programs for the uh, spring semester or the fall semester, think about your team. Think about who your officers are. <clears throat> Which color are they? Who do you want maybe creating the event? Who do you want working on a checklist of tools, supplies, locations, resources? Who do you want to make sure that it's fun and that there's a good positive interaction with the people? And who do you want kind of taking leadership of making sure the team is together and that they're moving toward the common goal, that they're providing vision? And those four things, I've just described all four colors. And so think about your team and the people that you're working together with. You want to make sure that you're able to do that, that you're able to build a team that, that brings together all four colors, all four personality types, in order to be most effective um, and to have the best program. Uh, or maybe it's a class and you're working on a group project. I know sometimes group projects can stress you out, making sure everybody's pulling their weight, but again, when you're picking your friends or classmates to be in that project, think about the four colors. Who's going to provide vision? Who's going to make the list, keep you on track? Who's going to make sure it's creative and appealing to the eye and the others? And who's going to make sure that, you know, everybody's kind of feeling good about it, that it's you know, not creating friction and conflict. All right. So let's kind of put it all together in, um, we are all equally important, right? No matter what our personality type is, no matter what our primary color is, we're all important. It's about how we work together in the things that we do in our work, in our classes, in our organizations like ALD. It's how we communicate with each other. Remember, it's a give and a take. It's not about conflict. It's about how we work together to communicate, accomplish the goal, and obviously ultimately succeed. Always keep in mind that each one of us has a blend of each color and different variations of that. It's all about whether we use them or not. We may have a primary and a secondary, but it's about can we balance our dominant traits with the ones not so present. So if you look in the population, Gold personalities are usually about 33 to 50% of the population, followed closely thereafter with the orange population, 12 to 33%. Then we have blue, very closely related as well, which is 12 to 25% of the population. And then our green folks are the smaller percentage, but 
they're all still equal. Remember, it doesn't matter what personality type you have, it's about how we work together to communicate and to succeed. So, I guess my advice to you would be, try to play off of each other's strengths. Try to consider how others approach ideas, projects, and communication, right? Um, think about the examples we've give to, uh, given today in this presentation and apply that to what you do on a daily basis. On your campus, you may be the chapter president. You may be the leader of the events team. You may be um, a, an officer in your student government association. Um, you may be the leader of a fraternity or a sorority. You may be a community leader in a nonprofit organization or providing community service. Um, you might be a leader within um, a class or a class project. And one day, you may also be um, a leader in your workplace. But remember, being a leader isn't always about being a certain personality. You need to have it all together, knowing that we're all an integral part of the team. So I'll pose a couple of questions for you real quick. Um, don't necessarily want to open it up to you know, conversation, but certainly something to think about. And if you have ideas, feel free to reach out to ALD or to myself, and we can certainly dialogue more. But have you ever encountered that one person with whom you just could not communicate? I know I have. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes I feel like I'm all the way over here and they're all the way over here and we're just not on the same page. Have you ever had days where you felt like you were speaking a foreign language and no one else could understand you? That right there could be connected to how you're coming off with your personality and how the other personality is interpreting you. As I mentioned, as we went through all of those four traits or the four colors, if you're this color, think about doing things a certain way. If you're working with that color, think about how you work with them. And lastly, have you ever tried to get a coworker or a classmate or friend to understand your point of view without any success, that might be another example of how it didn't quite work out successfully, right? You needed to understand how to work better together with knowing your personality traits, how to communicate to get the job done, and ultimately be successful. So I hope in maybe the last um, you know, little bit here that you've been able to understand what are true colors and discovering that unique personality both that you possess as well as other people you're around. Um, I hope that you've understood a little bit more about each one of the four color personalities, the blues, the orange, the golds, and the greens. I also hope that you've been able to um, you know, find ways that you can apply this to your life and to your projects and to your, your future, um, to your classes, to your organizations and all of those things. Um, so I'm going to kind of shift back over to Eileen and uh, we can open up to any sort of discussion or questions. Um, and if not, um, you know, I certainly bid everybody success in understanding your color and how you can be most successful with other people. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bradley. Um, we don't have uh, questions right now, but you've left your um, contact information and folks know how to contact ALD if they have questions or ideas or suggestions. So thank you so much for all your work on this presentation. It was great. Really appreciate it. I hope everyone got something out of it. And uh, look for more webinars uh, and topics on our website uh, at nationalald.org. We'll post some more topics um, and register for more. Thank you so much, Bradley. Absolutely. Thank you, Eileen. I hope everybody enjoyed it. 